welcome to Reimagining Teaching and Learning in the General Studies Curriculum. We feature a trending approach today, which is called the flipped classroom method. This method allows the classroom, as it says, to be flipped, where what is traditionally done in the classroom is done at home, and what is done at home is done in the classroom. The approach really allows for higher order thinking skills to be done in the classroom where the teacher can focus on the application of knowledge. And what do the students do at home? They come prepared for the work in the classroom, usually through the use of videos. So we are going to see Mr. Sean Hunt, a teacher at Harrison College, demonstrating the use of the flip classroom approach. Hey, good morning, everyone. Okay, so based on the result for the assignment that I guess you I gave you back. Right, we're gonna have some different groups. Matthew and Amon, you'll be working on the multiplication of matrices. Have to make sure you get that. Those who have finished the multiplication of the matrices, you are moving on to learning activity 9.19. Nine. Learning activity 9.19. Where we're looking at matrices and simultaneous equations. So we'll be looking at how we use the inverse, which we would have just completed last class, to solve linear simultaneous equations. We know the methods of elimination and substitution from last year. So now we're going to learn a new method, the matrix method. And for me personally, personally, it is a lot easier than the simultaneous equation methods that you know already because it just uses the matrices. We just focus on the numbers and not particularly the algebra. So hopefully you find it as easy as I do. The flip classroom is a teaching method which focuses on students doing their learning at home or outside of the classroom and doing their learning activities inside of the classroom. So the traditional model of teaching, students will go into a classroom, the teacher will give the instruction, and then they will go home and do their homework. So the flip classroom, as the name suggests, flips that model, and the learning is done at home via videos, PowerPoints, experimentation, different methods are used at home, and then when the student comes into the classroom, then the learning activities begin. And therefore, the teacher can have a more direct influence on the learning activities as, as, as well as the peers of the students. For me personally, the traditional method was not appealing to me as a teacher, and I don't think it was appealing to many of my students because some students grasp the material quickly, while others take a little longer. So the flipped classroom allows students to work at their own pace. So when I did my investigations, that's one of the things I liked about the flipped classroom. It allowed students to work at their own pace. Well, on any given day, the classroom could look a bit chaotic because different students are at different pace levels in the work, but it takes a lot of planning and preparation. So in a typical day, I might have two sets of students on let's say page 90 of their workbook, while others are on page 85. So those on page 90, I would provide some minimal instruction because those are generally, generally the students who grasp the concept easily and they can go ahead without much influence from me. So they will work collaboratively as a group and they will help correct one another's work and I also provide the answer sheets for them so occasionally they will check their answers to make sure that they are correct. But with the more advanced students, they tend to work more independently of the teacher. So that frees me up then to work with the other students who may not fully grasp the concept and hence are a little slower than the others. But again, it takes some planning, and at times it does look chaotic, but there is method to the madness. Okay, well, you would definitely need to have a plan of your work, know where, what you want to accomplish 
by the end of the term or year or whatever time period you're looking at. So you definitely need to, from the beginning of the year, know what content needs to be covered, have the exercises for covering that content, worksheets, whatever. So therefore, for me, I had to create a workbook which covered the entire year, the syllabus for the entire year. So therefore, students come at the beginning of the year and they know that this is the work that they have to cover for the year. So some students, therefore, just take that, they take the notes, the online videos, and they, I guess, in their head, they set out a schedule of how they're going to accomplish this. Also, I had to adjust the classroom setting because in the traditional classroom, the teachers are at the front and giving the instruction where students sit in their seats and take notes or do the different exercises. So I had to rearrange the classroom so that group work was more easily available to the students. So that was a major consideration, reconfiguring the entire classroom to accommodate group work and more interaction between myself and the students. But Personally, well, those are the main considerations that I would have taken. We, uh, I assign students based on their progress or based on their lack of progress. Like today, you would have seen two students were assigned to do matrix multiplication. Like those students had been assessed and they had not met the criteria of 65%. So they had some remedial work to do on that topic. The others were then assigned based on their progress. So those who had completed the required homework, they were able to move on to the next topic. And some students are two topics ahead. So I allow them to go on to an additional topic. So therefore, based on where you are at, based on how much work you have done, then you are assigned to your activity for the day. All right, number one, we're going to write our equations using matrices. So we have the coefficient of x, coefficient of x, coefficient of y, coefficient of negative y. But our second matrix is always x, y. So we just put x here and a y here. And we can see row by column, so one by x is and then plus 1 by y is y, so it says the same thing. Equals 3, negative 7, right? I'm going to call this matrix A, e, this X, and this B. This is what CXC generally likes to use. Right? If you look back here, you see it tells you to write it in that form. All right, so next, we're going to find the inverse of that. Remember how to find the inverse? Okay, alright, so we gotta go back a little bit then. Alright, so this is the symbol for inverse. So it's 1 over the determinant. Now here's the part of the part which may cause some trouble. We're gonna switch to these. So what will go here? And what goes here? All right, this sign is going to change. So if it's negative, it will change to good. And this is positive, so it will change to negative. And that is what we call it. Well, before the year started, I would have contacted the parents about the initiative of using the flip classroom. Right, and from my recollection, no parent indicated that children, their child or ward did not have access to the internet. So that was not a problem. However, students tend not to be familiar with this method, so them actually going to access the material pose a challenge. So to accommodate for that, I therefore made, in some occasions, access available within the classroom. For example, if a student had finished a particular topic and they wanted to move on without me being available to teach them the topic, they are allowed to use my devices in the classroom to access the videos or the whatever information it is. Also, within some workbooks, there are notes provided 
and some students tend to be able to read the notes and understand the concept, so that's also another consideration. And with the notes, those are printed, so no technology is required in that case. So that is a way of working around that. All right, so the videos can be created by the individual teacher because I went about creating my own videos because that is my preference. But there are several sites out there which with free access to videos, there's Khan Academy, there's examsolutions.net, that's for the higher level student, CAPE student. But there are many online resources that are readily available, so if the teacher does not have the time or the resources to create their own materials, there are alternatives to that. And also you can simply take your notes and PDF and you can just talk through your notes, so that's also a way to do it. Or you can just provide the notes in advance for students. Some students like to have the notes in advance, they download them, they print them, so they, they can write on them, so that they're not held back by the teacher. The teacher is not the driving force of the class, the student is the driving force. So if the student wants to go ahead, they are free to do that once they have the necessary learning resources. So it's not focused primarily on the videos, it's just focused on preparing content that the student knows in advance what it is they have to cover. The flipped classroom method, the main thing, allowing students to work at their own pace. I do recall a student when he came into fourth form and I had provided the materials in the summer, he immediately started his CSEC syllabus. So he started preparing for his CSEC exam. And this was a student who had initially failed mathematics in third form the previous year. So with the videos and with the workbooks which were printed at the Ministry of Education, he was able to begin his CSET preparation in the summer, not having to wait until the school term began. And by January of the following year, he was able to sit the exam and he got a grade two. So I found that very pleasing, a student who came from failing in third form to getting a grade two in January of his fourth form year. And consequently, he resat the exam in June the same year, and then he got his grade one. And that is predominantly because the material was available for him, and also because he set a goal for himself. He had the internal drive to want to achieve, and he achieved his goal. So that was, for me, one of the highlights of the flipped classroom, him being able to move himself from failing in third form to CSET grade one in fourth form. Change is constant, but everybody is reluctant to change. So many students are, sir, this is not real teaching if I am not in front of the board writing down notes if everything is prepared in advance. So I have had issues with students not thinking that this is how, what a teacher is supposed to do. So it does require that the mindset of the student is changed along with the mindset of parents. So that is where we focus our initial target to change the mindset. So in the summer, I would generally send out letters indicating, well, this is a change, why it is viewed, why we view it as a not necessarily a necessary change, but what we view as something that can be beneficial if done in the correct way. So we try to encourage parents to go see what the material is like, to see what is offered, and we still get some resistance. We as a school body, we still get some resistance to it because it's something that is new. But in light of recent developments with CSC going to online examinations. I think since online is where tech education is going, we will be going in that direction regardless. So I think that students are, and parents are going to have to get on board and become more comfortable with the online environment. So therefore we continue to push it even though we get some um, people are pushing back against it, but we continue to push it because we see the necessity for it. 
I believe personally for our mathematics, it provides students with more learning opportunities because online you can create an, a never ending worksheet. If the computer can automatically generate questions for students to continuously practice. Whereas in the workbook, once a set of questions is done, that is it. So the online environment does provide continual assessment for students. It also provides immediate assessment. Students can get their results immediately. They don't have to wait until they bring in their homework for a teacher to correct it. So bearing these things in mind, we push the positives, we know there are negatives, negatives with access, negative regarding some issue with the computer, some technical difficulty, there are negatives, but we believe and we push that the positives outweigh the negatives. We follow the motto, don't practice until you get it right, practice until you can't get it wrong. So in our classroom, we try to focus on mastery. Generally, a student will practice a concept they may or may not understand. They do a test and they may or may not pass. If a student passes the test, that shows that they have the necessary skills and we move on to the next topic. If a student fails a test in a traditional classroom, that student also has to move on to the next topic while not having learned the skills which are necessary. In the mastery atmosphere where we keep practicing and practicing and practicing, with the online environment, I reiterate, the online environment makes this very easy to do. A student can practice a worksheet, the computer will give them feedback where they went wrong, immediate feedback that is, and it will regenerate another worksheet. So the practice, the student can learn from their previous mistakes and then continuously gain the skills necessary in order to achieve mastery of the content. Because just like if you're building a house, if the contractor told you that your foundation is only 60% ready, I'm pretty sure most of us, no, none of us will want him to start putting out the walls. But that's kind of the method of the traditional classroom. A student gets 60% and we build on that weak foundation knowing then that the student can't really progress to the next level. And we cause them a bit of frustration when we do that. So hopefully in the flip classroom, and we apply the mastery technique, students can make sure that they get, let's say, at least 80%. So they learn 80% of the skill and therefore they're in a better position than to grasp the next level which uses the previous skill. So we try to encourage mastery, continuous practice, not until you get it right, but until you can't get it wrong.